Tastes good. So guys, go on over there, subscribe. Make a come every Wednesday and Sunday to make on a show where I go on in a this kitchen here over here. So alright? So see you if guys. If you wanna know how I make my version of the Christmas cake, keep watching. So whether you come from yard or foreign, this is a cake that we have all come to know and love. It's the famous rum cake, black cake, fruit cake, Christmas cake. No matter what you call it, it's the same cake, guys. So this is just my little version of it. So I'm going to run down the ingredients real quick with you. Red label wine, of course. Some rose water. Forget rid of that raw egg smell. Ray and Neville turn it up. And my grandmother's favorite thing, she used to make her own the molasses but don't use too much of that it make a cake bitter mix essence vanilla essence some ground cinnamon and also some mixed spice that have been all the nutmeg and all these things and you could also add some allspice but use a little bit of that not too much I can already taste the deliciousness yes yes I also have some eggs, six to be exact, all-purpose flour, brown sugar, and definitely guys use brown sugar. You don't want to use granulated sugar. That don't make it, okay? And this sugar I have, it's a loose sugar. You want to get compact sugar. The compact sugar rubs out easier, much easier with your butter and stuff like that. This one, the green, them big like, I don't know. I don't know. All right? You need baking powder some butter i am also adding some raisins currants cherries mixed peel prunes and that make it named fruitcake also i have some orange lemon to cut the rawness from the egg and I, I didn't have the brown in there, but I'm going to use that in conjunction with the molasses. And I'm using this to grease my pan. And I also have some strawberry preserves here. I'm not sure if I'm going to use it, but just in case I need it, then I'll have it, you know, have it on hand. So let's just jump right into this video, okay? So for all the ingredients guys, I will break down the portions that I use. I'll just leave it on the screen, so pay attention for that, because I'm making a pound cake, so the ingredients are broken down for a pound cake, okay? And I'm going to start out this video by stewing my fruits. I didn't soak any from last year, alright? I did use off all of what I have. So, 
along the way I will tell you all the portions that I use and if I had anything I will also let you know so I'm gonna just use my cast iron pot you can use any pot you have it don't make a difference all right so I'm gonna use two and a half cup of red label wine you'll see me pour out two but while the fruits were stewing I gradually added a half cup so it not burn because you know you want the thing for go up on low and slow that's what give it its flavor okay so two cups right now and then half a cup gradually until your fruits is done stewing making these cakes is a process guys so you just want to keep that in mind and now you want to put it low and slow okay so now you want to add your rose water and rose water guys is a strong spice so take your time with it and you just need a little bit no more than that this particular brand of spices guys the vanilla essence and the mix essence they come in double strength so just careful with it use your measurements or if you use your grandmother way of measuring take your time same way you don't want to use too much have done that before and reap the repercussions all right take your time And for all my nice and beautiful people out there that have issues with high blood pressure, and I can skip the salt intake for this part, and you could also skip the salt for the whole process, but just no say salt give your food flavor. You don't want over salty food and things like that. You just want to give it taste. add two cinnamon sticks and all these spices guys is just to infuse flavor in your black cake what better than that it has a turn up and like a tops a pimento seed you could also use the already grounded pimento um, powder I just didn't have any on hand but even though I put it in whole, I'm gonna blend out all these fruits so it will incorporate with everything. You won't feel a whole pimento seed in your mouth. So don't worry about that, people. So now you just can start adding in your fruits. Half a cup, more or less. You can eyeball it or measure it. I didn't measure it, I just figured more or less. This is about half a cup, but like I said, Grandmother days when I measure nothing, we just do, use a handful, a little pinch here and a little pinch there and everything work out right, right? So with all that sweetness going on in this pot, you want to balance it out with a citrus fruit. My choice is an orange and like I said, it's just to balance the taste, alright? And don't mind if some of the pulp get in there, it's just more than a in this spot. Remember everything I could blend out. So, don't worry about that. And just clean up along the way. You will appreciate it at the end when you don't have all these pots and pans to wash. I may tell you that the aroma where come from this pot right about now make the nose you then stand up a burst of energy I go on in my nose right now. Not for go see out, but be a set. You want to leave 
leave this on for about one hour or until your fruits are nice and tender. Take a taste of your thing. Nobody can beat you up. So now you want to add all your dry ingredients. Your flour, baking powder, cinnamon powder, all them things. Yeah, and I save my stuff. Alright, it just give cake a nice little hearingness about it. And my go up seeing my grandmother doing this. I mean, if you do something wrong, cake could not turn out right. So, I just follow the trend. Alright. And this is two cups of flour. Okay. And I have to give my hats off to all the people that um, I can just do a little pinch here and a little pinch there. A handful of this, a handful of that, and your cake come out. Turn up like my grandmother. Hats off to Anna. I do that, you know. I do that. But I can't do it now because I'm showing the guys how the thing will come out proper. But on a regular day, it's just a tops of this, a tops of that, a pinch of this, a handful of this. Your cake come out okay. But like right now, you have to do the measuring thing. So now I'm adding all the spices. Things like my salt, cinnamon, mixed spice, and all of these things. You already added in the fruits, but you need to add some over here too. Hence me just using half a teaspoon of everything, cause we already add some over there. So you know you don't want to overdo it and over salty thing. So now for the baking powder, this is a little thing that you know your baking powder can is to level the baking powder so use it all right and I am putting four half teaspoon of baking powder because I couldn't find my teaspoon little measuring spoon all right so now I'm gonna work on the sugar and butter and I'm using four stick of butter which equal to a pound of butter or you could use a tub that equal to a pound remember this is a pound cake all right and my eggs and butter are room temperature don't ask me why well, I'll explain at another time but So you see my little piece of mixer you now that make me worry you know <laughs> the thing them drop out. You know, so, so that that, that alright. And that's why I am dreading this part. Because the sugar green them big like me no know what to say. Oh Lord. Now this really bringing me back to my childhood days when I rub up the egg and but the the sugar and the butter with my grandmother. Now I know why she did pass it on to me. May I tell you some my hand used to hurt me. So just don't use the raw the raw, um loose sugar or the raw sugar. Okay? The sugar green them just too big. Just hopped for the compact sugar. It just easier for dissolve. Take half of the work out of it, alright? Or if you have your good up good up kitchen aid mixer or any mixer comparable to that, girl your business just take off because I've been mixing this one now about half an hour and the green them still stand up in there the attachment on the mixer just keep falling off them just a fall out just like that so now use that sugar please don't up for the compact sugar and do your thing all right so I'm just gonna keep mixing this until I get it to the consistency that I want green free and all of those lovely things me really not gonna make this mix of flat my show mega show sure who's boss around here and i strongly believe that whatever mood you're in when you're cooking that's how your food come out happy thoughts happy food comment down below if you feel that way also Yes guys, so this is what it's looking like right now. I'm not going to more than us some better lighting. So this is what it looks like right now. It's fluffy. But this is my issue. When you do this, you want to know if your thing whip properly. You pick it up and you put it between your finger like this. And if you still feel the grain, that means it won't whip somewhere. Even though it look like it whip and thing. 
So back in the time when my grandmother used to do this, she used to do one or two things, or sometimes the two of them. She used to take the red label bottle, or any glass bottle, and fill it with hot water, and use that as the, you see I have the spatula, with I use the bottle, and I do this. So while the water at it and melt, the sugar and it and melt, the butter, that was very effective back then. Also, she used to put some hot water in another bowl underneath the, the, this bowl there, and the hot water would arise and help melt it. Right here now, I have an empty glass bottle, so I have to go up for number two, which is add some water and put it under this. Uh. So I have to do that and come back and make another so go on. So see it here guys, I have a kettle with hot water. I'ma have the a uh, baking pan down there so I'm gonna pull it, put some hot water in it and then I'm gonna continue doing my mixing with the the like a handicap mixer. So I'm gonna say I mean it help me so I can't even call it handicap but you know what I mean, right? When you want to get things done and things are break down pan and things like and you want when you have bake your cake and them things they are even cook you in a happy mood. Look guys, if you're not so many talk about look over there sir. You can already see the butter melting, right? So may I go utilize that time the while it melt and make gonna see where I go and may I go put it up, alright? So guys, the piece of mixer go on like it won't bad me up, but may I go show him say. I mean it's a persistence and I go whip up the cake here yeah? with all it won't fall out and all them things yeah but what go on the the mixture get to um the butter melt too fast so I go get rid of the hot water cause it reach to the point now where it is nice and fluffy so I go just deal with that Better after, but you know, I want to get myself done this, so I'm gonna move this because it's really hot. Really hot, no, 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 Bad, bad, bad. I don't know why I made it evil. This is like the raw sugar, guys. It's in its rice form. So I eat that. Nothing else I can do. If the cake turns out bad, I don't know. I just sugar. Well, this one's not bad. Right? Okay, so I'm going to go to the next one. Right? So, guys, now we have this. Right? Now we have a little bowl right here, so. I'm going to push this over just a little bit. Move this out of my way. Here yeah, I'm going to add. Alright. So. And I really don't want to fight with taking out the eye out of the egg. So. I'm going to go on. And you do this separately guys because you don't want a bad egg in your thing too. Three. And then. Then beat it for about 30 seconds to a minute. And I we'll do that three other times because I don't want to overbeat the, the butter. You know, when you do it one at a time, it's like, uh, you know, defeat the whole purpose of overbeating your butter. So this is how my grandmother always do it. Even if she had like a two pound, three pound cake, she always had three eggs at a time just to alleviate the whole overbeating of the butter. So she do it, some may do it, and some may have shown. Yeah. Bottom line, you just want to make sure everything is beaten and incorporated properly. Eggs well blended out and all of that. That's it. On the summer, I deal with the mixer like it. I want like a tender roni. 
because it won't fall apart. It won't fall apart for me. No, sir. So I'm going to just continue to beat up this butter and thing like that. And if I never mentioned before, the eggs and the butter are room temperature, right? And um, back in the day, we never have no fridge. So of course, we'd have to use room temperature egg, go to the full cube, go get two egg, or when you go market, on a carnation market and thing like that, by the time you reach home, the egg, them are room temperature. So it we'd have to work with, like, all it do is give your cake a nice light texture to it. You know, you don't want your cake too light where it will crumble out for you, but at the same time, you want that little firmness to it. Yeah, so black cake for though. Yeah. So I'm just continue the tradition just the same way. So me always are the one where my grandmother wake me up early morning, 5 o'clock. Who oh, remember them days there? 4 or 5 o'clock a morning so you can go carnation market, go get the good fresh fruits and thing them. She always wake me up for go um, carnation market with her while my other cousin them in a bed asleep. I never like it. Come in want my sleep. But yeah, me and her go and she just going with her. I learn how to buy the good breadfruit and yam and banana and all these things and not only that i get all the nice little goodies them you get boiled egg mint tea the little pick up salt fish with the tomato we are say man me me not mind about the the, the whole them the home asleep let them stay they sleep and yeah me gain the benefits of all of that now as an adult where me learn little things and see there me can show no what go on how she teach me for do the thing and it's not like she literally say yeah Charlene I saw you do this or I saw you do that put in one teaspoon of this and no she just dash in and look at this and dash in and look at that and I'm gonna pick up along the way so this is what the mixture is looking like it's more on the liquid side and that's because I melted the butter with the hot water so I'm gonna show you guys how to fix this don't worry about it I got it so now I'm gonna add my browning and molasses and um, my grandmother always have this on hand as a matter of fact as I told you guys she make her own but I am gonna change just one little thing sorry mama I'm gonna use only one tablespoon of molasses and the rest in browning because the two together guys will make your um, cake a little bit if you use too much of either one so yeah so I'm basically I go wing the thing I just I go add the brown in gradually I go add two right here now and then mix it up and see how it look if I need more I just add more because if you put too much you can't take it out you see what I say and then when you bite your cake your teeth I go black like tar you know and that you still want to look you know fancy when you eat your black cake so, I'm going to mix up my thing you now and tell you what I'm going So this is how the, after mixing it up, this is how it's looking like and obviously this is a black cake. So I'm going to add some more brown into it. But at the same time, you don't want to add too much because you don't want your cake bitter. Browning and molasses is burnt sugar. And you don't want your black cake bitter. Right? We don't want that. So guys, I just want to say happy Thanksgiving in advance. All the things we're going to partake in. The food, the drinks, the dance, family time, yeah. So the mixer is on low, guys. All right, I'm just gonna like, incorporate the browning and thing like that. Cause we don't want a patchy patchy color cake round here. Cake, okay? you want to mix the butter nice. All right. So I'm gonna light the color we have right now. I'm gonna like, just work with that. And um, I already wash my lemon. All right, lemon wash nice and clean. We just gonna like, dry it off so we can grate it properly. And the le the lime rind actually help to get rid of that raw smell from all them eggs and um, just keep moving the lime that way you know get the white part in it because the white part kind of bitterish you know it have a little bitter taste to it so now put that in there and this is another tip where my grandmother gave me so yeah pure traditional things are going around here today so the only thing I didn't do that my grandmother always do, she never missed this part, is take the eye out of the egg. 
them say that to add the rawness to the egg so definitely take that part out all right but just because the interest at time why i'm gonna never do it but like i said definitely take that out and continue doing your thing the rose water also like i said previously the rose water help for alleviate that smell too car rose water mm, the nice little smell and thing so even though i did add some in the food mix up thing over there so that's why i had only added like a quarter teaspoon that way i could add the rest over here so so because rose water have a strong taste to it you don't want to put too much and then may i go add in the rest of my liquor spice and things like that it i got turn up Mm hmm I know it already. I know. So guys, please subscribe to my channel. Hit that notification bell. And you'll be notified of every single time I put a new video. So back to this Ray and Nevy rum thing. I know it's called a rum cake. But guys, I have to drive to work. Alright? So I know I'm drunk I drive to work. You know that go already. So I just got other liquor tip because me personally, I will uh, eat three for a slice of cake. You see what I say? I love it that much. I love black cake. So in order for me to eat and drive, I'm not going to put no whole heap of rum in it. So I'm just going to put a little bit. Plus red label wine in it. Mm -mm, you know how to do that. No, I forgot. Even with this small portion, I forgot to wait till I come back home from work before me eat peace and I never want that me do want to eat a nice little piece of cake and then go work but put however much you want half and half rum to red label or something but boy that I got strong I'm <laughs> sorry for now honestly the burst that sent when me are getting at this kitchen it's breathtaking all of the spices the rum the red label the rose water all of them thing there plus the mix peel still over there so i boil up on the stove oh my god guys me need help for smell this somebody come help me smell this <laughs> so i'ma just add the flour and i'ma do that in two parts you could do it in three if you want okay so i'ma just mix it in oh whoa 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 damn it i just spilled a brown in well i guess it ain't cooking if you're not spilling something right I'ma just clean that up after because you can't stop in the middle of mixing your butter that will contribute to your cake falling so I'ma just mix this and I'ma use um, the 360 cotton method my grandmother taught me that and I also learned that in home economics class in school Norman Gardner all age in the east side at Kingston comment down below guys if you used to go to Norman Gardner at um, Winward Road all age school so now that that portion of the flour is combined mega just add the rest and do the same thing and guys oh no no one use the mixer for this um portion of your mixing because that will contribute to over mixing of your cake all right you don't want to over mix a cake that just make your cake fat so guys just take your time mix and cut mix and cut and also remember this my way don't have to be your way we all learn differently that's why our local jamaican mother is out of many one people yard and farm guys please like share comment on this video tell me what you think so far all right subscribe to the channel remember that guys definitely subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell and you'll be notified of every single time i put a new video up and guys if you have any questions leave it down below i'll definitely answer your question as soon as i see them so let's just continue work on this cake here So guys because of the issues i was having with the mixer and i had to use that hot water method to melt my sugar grains and stuff like that i really don't like the consistency of the mixture right now so i might just add an extra half cup of flour and see how it's looking like that so guys if you have a uh mixer that is working for you and you don't have to do the hot, hot water method then definitely stick to the two cups of flour and your texture will be perfect okay? 
Okay, my grandson is in the background trying to say something, right? Say hi, people! So this is the mixed fruit after boiling it for an hour. It's nice and cool. I took out the cinnamon sticks and stuff like that. So I'm just gonna blend it right now. And um, I left some chunky because I like to feel the texture in my mouth when I'm eating it. And then I blended the rest of it out smooth so that could incorporate in the cake. Forget flavor and all of these things. The grandkids in the background, guys, please just ignore them well man, no, i don't wanna ignore them but i'm just saying so i'm just gonna add this into it and do you see i'm 360 cut i personally like to taste the little chunks sometimes you know but if you're you feel like blending it all the way out smooth go right ahead and i also used only half cup of each fruit you know it's a pound cake you don't want too much fruit tonight you just need it for you know balance out the thing so guys i'm at the end of my mix-up situation over here i'm just gonna um throw these in my baking tin right now and this is definitely a dry run of this um recipe i'm definitely gonna bake up a bigger batch when it comes around to christmas i just wanted one of these for my thanksgiving dinner and i don't know if it's gonna make it but i'm gonna try i am the black cake eater in this house my kids not really dig it like that but yeah more the merrier for me so guys i'm just gonna grease my baking pans and i only can find two you know sometimes we have family and friends will come over and bury things and don't bring it back i'm gonna bring back my things them all right i need them right now christmas season this so yeah <laughs> i'm just gonna like, grease this up and throw in my butter and thing and i um I think I have too much butter. I might have to go dig up another pan or something like that. I have some Paris dish around the place. So I might have to go use one of them there. But whatever the case may be, may I tell you, so the place smell nice. And this thing that I use to grease the pan, I've been using using it for forever. And it really works, guys. You're not going to get no burn cake around here. And you're not going to through the old process of using the parchment paper or grease paper, as we call it in Jamaica, and stuff like that. When I tell you, so this work, it work, okay? And this is not an advertisement either it just do the job i know us as a people that we all stick to what we know and and love so if the parchment paper butter and flour is what you're used to and stuff like that go right ahead guys there's no wrong way of doing this as long as we all get the same results right let's just bake up some christmas cake yeah although this guys is for my thanksgiving I just do a little dry run that way I know say my measurements and all of this down pat for the Christmas season. So this is what this is, you know what I say? Alright, so I got to show in my butter right now. And you can use the measuring cup and that way you can see exactly how much you put into each pan. And if I never said it before, this pan right here is a 9 inch and the other one is a 8 inch. Alright, so you can um judge it that way but me I just like to freely throw it in and like i said you could use the measuring cup that way if you have to do it again you know exactly how much you had put in it and it never flow over and things like that all right so that's it for the nine inch baking pan so i'm just like to start on the 10 inch the eight inch and um it a really look like me gonna need another pan so you know what you think for overflow while it's baking you know it just like, have a horrible smell so I'm just like, um, flatten this out and obviously too much in this so I'm just like, take out some and go look for another baking pan most likely it's gonna be a little pyrex dish all right because i was looking for these baking pans and what can i find them i don't know what i'm doing 
So I put my oven on 250 and it's done preheating the beep went off. So I'm just gonna place these in my oven on the middle shelf, all right? I always use the middle shelf because it rises. So I never use the top part of my, my oven. It rises and it will, if you place your cakes there, I know sometimes we have multiple cakes to bake and we wanna do it, you know, as fast as possible because of space and time. But try not to put it on the extreme top part of your oven. The outside will look like it's baked, but the inside will still be wet. So just try not to put it up there if you have multiple amounts of cake to bake. Try put it in, you know, three, four at a time on the second shelf or move your shelf down. And I still have this big mess to clean up. It's so annoying, guys, but I'm just gonna smile and nod. <laughs> So guys, after exactly two hours, this is what the cake is looking like. You don't know now, got to do the old toothpick testing thing to make sure it come out clean and all of that. And I did that on all three cakes. So now I'm just going to take it out and, you know, it look good. But guys, the proof is in the taste. We are going to taste this up after it cool down and all of these things and see how it tastes. And I'm going to make it on no. So guys, as soon as you take your cake from the oven while it's still hot, that means it's still moist, you want to add your red label wine, whatever wine you use to bake your cake, or whatever wine you want to drizzle over the top of your cake, go right ahead and do that at this point while it's hot and moist. You don't want to wait until it cool, then the, the, the cake not so porous no more and it won't soak in, it will just sit on top of the cake all right so do that now and i wish i had a um spray bottle i i normally use a spray bottle that is just designated for the kitchen and spray it you get a better distribution of the wine all over the cake but if not just use the the cover the thing and sprinkle it over it so now at the reveal time i'm gonna put the the wine in it and then cover it over i'm gonna go work all right so now this is what it's looking like nice and moist it feel moist it smell nice and me know it a got taste nice when my taste it in at 2.2 seconds all right right after me do this just a go take it out transfer it onto a plate so i can display it and show you guys who are gone so just flip it over like that and um, if it have like a resistance coming out just use a little bread knife, butter knife, and whatever, and kind of pry it from the corner and do the process again. See the guys, I eat that. No burn residue, no left in my pan. See? Nice and moist cake. Trust me, when I tell them, I say, I want to try this recipe. Just subscribe to the channel now, watch some of my video. I know this is the first one, but there's a lot more coming, all right? I'm a granny teach me, so you know granny, old school and them things. So trust me guys, when I tell you say, things are going to turn up over here, so just go subscribe to the channel, like, share, comment, and definitely hit that notification bell, and you'll be notified of every single time I put a new video See I'm about to add some more red label to this. So guys, you might be wondering where the third cake is, right? I was wondering the same thing too. The people them wind it up and eat it. Me come home and catch one liquor piece. Me said the thing tastes good, me not lie, tastes good. Not because I did it, me I said that it tastes good. So this one me I go leave for Thanksgiving and happy Thanksgiving guys. And the other ones, I'ma share that with family and friends for now. So until then guys, please like, share and comment on this video. Subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell and guys we're not gonna every time i put a new video up so thank you